In August of 2010, Tyler Clementi and Darren Ravi were paired as roommates at Rutgers University. They were strangers but got along well. In September, Clementi reportedly asked for private use of their room twice to spend time with a male visitor. Prosecutors say Ravi and another student secretly set up a camera in the room to spy on the encounter and invited others to watch. There were instant messages, texts, tweets, teenagers gossiping in this digital age. But for Tyler Clementi, who had only recently told his parents apparently that he was gay, the humiliation may have been unbearable. A day after the second alleged spying incident, he jumped to his death from New York's George Washington Bridge. Tyler's final goodbye, also posted in Digital Age Method, simple and sad, the Facebook post read, jumping off the GW Bridge, sorry. Social media have called this a civil rights gay bashing issue. Anti-bullying groups blog that they own this story. Is Clemente's death a hate crime or simply a case of, as some are claiming, young students who were victim of a miscommunication brought on by the social media and kids just acting out in thoughtless ways? Joining me, criminal defense attorney Mark Iglarsh. I've also got Erica America Hayden, a psychotherapist and Z100 radio personality. Uh, also, radio host and social activist, B, it says R.B. Scott. Is it B. Scott? B. Scott. B. Scott, okay. And Tucker Max joins me. I believe you're by phone. He is the author. Oh, there you are. You're in a, you're in a set. It's excellent. Of course, the uh, author uh, of I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell. Now, Tucker, do you know why I threw you in here? No, actually, I'm not sure. All right. Because I know you have a proclivity to throw video cameras on yourself and your friends. You've told me some pretty crazy stories about that. Right. Yeah, you're, now you're ashamed. The, the question okay, is, well, you, the, yeah. the, all right, so the question is, you, this story is, is very complicated. Some kids basically set up their computer in such a way that they could spy on this guy's roommate. Uh, they, and as you read the story in the New Yorker magazine, they had concerns about the guy he was with. They actually thought he might rip him off or be, to do something inappropriate with him. So they were kind of concerned about the kid's safety, but they were kind of tantalized also what was going on. And they watched for a few seconds, and then they chatted about it amongst themselves in, in sort of disgusting ways. The question is, do you have anything to say about young people throwing cameras on themselves these days? Well, I think there's a distinction between putting a camera on yourself and putting a camera on somebody else and then posting the video of someone else without their permission. There, I mean, there, there they didn't things. post it. And they didn't post it. They didn't post it, it turns no, out. That, that's what's being reported. As, as Apparently, that's not what happened. Uh, didn't he talk about his roommate being gay, though, on Twitter or something? Yes, yes. There was some, ta there was some very inappropriate sort of talking about it afterwards. The kid who eventually right. killed himself, Clementi, did read that, that nasty stuff. And the question they're trying to answer is, did that eventually lead to his suicide? But my question for you, Tucker, is you're someone, again, who's you, you've done this stuff. I don't know anybody else but you who's done it. And, and my question is, do you feel remorse now? Is this just something kids are, are more likely to do than ever before? I mean, what, how do I understand the, I mean, the context of a kid even thinking about doing this? Okay, well, first off, of course I feel remorse. Like, I, I'm not really sure there's any way to do this and then... Like, you can do it in the moment and think it's funny, but then later on, when you look at it, obviously, if you have any sort of empathy at all, if you're not a complete sociopath, then of course you're going to be like, man, that was messed up. I shouldn't have done that. It was really bad. Um, but, you know, like, when you're 20, 21, you don't necessarily, or 19, you don't necessarily think about these things at the time, um, which, I, again, doesn't excuse what he did, but the thought process... I think of a 19-year-old is something like, boy, wouldn't it be funny if I videotaped this, as opposed to really like thinking about, okay, what are the consequences of this? How would I hurt other people? Okay. You don't really Tucker, think through you, the you logic said it. You're, 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 uh, and then you write a book about it, right? But no, but anyway, but, you, but you, what you're saying is exactly what I'd hope you say, and my, my guests in the studio are actually reacting to this, so yes, who wants to go first? I totally believe that this is a hate crime, because there's no way... Um, that this would have happened if it was a man, uh, male and female. It's because it was two guys interacting and having sex with each other. That's what made it into a spectacle, and that's why they wanted to record it, and that's why they, you know, talked to friends about yeah. it. it they like, were tantalized. They were tantalized. This wasn't because an out guy. So, okay, no, he was an out guy. He was okay, out to his family. He was just newly out before he left for college, but mm -hmm. he was not securely out, perhaps. 
I have a scenario for you. Okay, so someone makes a mistake. They drink and they get into a car. Was there a, is their intention to go and kill somebody? No. But if they do kill somebody, are they then it's responsible for yeah. the consequences? Exactly. He made a mistake by invading his privacy and then trying to, on Twitter, potentially humiliate him. And there should be a consequence what as well. I think he should get those 10 years. It's not even like it is for manslaughter. It's for invasion of privacy. And there was one other thing that it was for. So I believe he, he made a mistake. And it was a mistake that really had con he had a conscious choice to humiliate another boy because of his sexuality. And the incriminating yeah. part for me was that the, the texting back and forth. Yeah, that's what really gets It was bad. saying eel and yuck. And yeah. That really shows and L, that it was. A lot of LOL, L -O -L, kind and of I'm yay and that kind of stuff. But, but Mark, I want to go out to you. You heard what Erica said. You're the, I Tucker has a law degree too, but you're the actual practicing attorney. What do you think about what she just said? I completely disagree that he deserves 10 years. We could all agree that what he did was a gross error in judgment. But now we're in the criminal arena. And the question is whether the prosecutors can prove bias intimidation, which is the up to 10 year mm -hmm. crime. And they can do so in three ways. They can prove in two of the ways his intent and what he felt was his intention. But the third way, which is the easiest way to do it, is to show that the victim felt intimidated and that he was targeted because he was gay. Now, some of the tweets that the victim had where he said, I thought this was so, with three O's, funny, and that when he was told it might be a hate crime, he laughed about it, may be compelling evidence for the jury to say, you know what, I'm not ready to hang him on the main charge. But B, part of it may be that this kid didn't want a lot of attention drawn to him. He was newly really out. He was, he was trying freshman. to down. He was trying to downplay it. Yeah. He was trying to make light of something he, that he, deeply he hurt Think him. about being a freshman, new freshman in yeah. a college. You don't want to make a big spectacle of yourself. You just want yeah. to fit in with your peers, this right? This guy Ravi goes to Rutgers University. He's not an idiot. You know the, the uh, lawyer's excuse that he's um, a juvenile. He doesn't know what he did. It was a stupid mistake. It just doesn't stand. And for if me, you know, I was out at UNC Chapel Hill, and I can only imagine if something like that happened to me. Oh. The embarrassment. The yeah. Well, okay, that's the, but you're, but that's gonna be the question to you. Would you do the embarrassment, the shame? Would it be so bad that it would make you jump off a bridge? Can you imagine that? Possibly. For Everybody reacts Possibly, because everyone but, but, reacts. But, 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 you, but you can imagine being in that spot. I, I can't really. I don't know what that is. You yeah. know, you said you can put yourself. There. When you're in college, you're figuring out everything. And, and things to you be, are hypersensitive because you're exploring them for the first time for yourself. And for to you have your peers judge you and to know exactly, because they could see it, exactly your sexual experiences, you know, that's embarrassing. And it could lead someone that's already dealing with issues and, you know, years of being ostracized and put down and bullied. But, but, you know, but, that but he, could did, lead he that. didn't have a lot of that kind of stuff in his pack. And he seemed pretty comfortable. His parents were fairly accepting. His mom apparently was a little dismissive. But the fact is, w would that you be? You never would, know. Would, would, but yeah. Hank, you never exactly. know. I you agree. Never if know. I, but you're the you're you're speaking on behalf of someone who can put themselves in that position. My question is this: If you put yourself there and you try to downplay it, does it make sense to you that that attempt at downplaying might have been real anguish? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's a defense mechanism. It's a defense. Yeah. All right.